Hey, Sugar Bee. Do you have clothes in your closet you don't wear because they're missing a button or there's a hole in it? Let's talk about that. Clothes are super expensive. That's probably why you haven't thrown away that shirt with a missing button or those shorts that have a hole in them. So one of the great ways you can save money and still wear your favorite clothes is by repairing them yourself. But a lot of people don't have a sewing kit. Maybe they don't know what goes in one or what tools they need. So today we're gonna to talk about that. So here I'm going to show you the essential things you need to have in a sewing kit so that you can repair your own clothes at home. Now this is just the basic kit. So this would be hand sewing. So maybe stitching up a seam, repairing a button, fixing a hole, those kind of things. So the first thing you're gonna need in your sewing kit is scissors. So I have here a pair of fabric shears and I have a small pair of embroidery scissors. Now these have a special purpose. This is specifically for cutting fabric, not paper or cardboard, just for fabric. They're generally inexpensive. Um, I think this pair cost me like $11 and I've had them for like 30 years. <laughs> These are little embroidery scissors. They're called stork scissors because they look like a stork. Um, they're generally inexpensive too. And this is something you would need to cut threads close or snip out little pieces that are in the way. All right, the next thing you're going to need is thread. Now, there are several kinds of thread. You can get silk thread or cotton thread or polyester thread. Um, I like to keep polyester, which is called all-purpose thread, and I like to keep cotton thread. So the difference is, is the polyester thread, this one, this one is a polyester thread. Um, and as you can see, it says all-purpose thread on it. Um, this one is an all-purpose thread. It's great for mending almost everything. Um, you can't really use it on silk or anything like that, but um, if you have silk clothes, buy silk thread. If most of your clothes are cotton or polyester, then buy cotton or all-purpose thread. So, um, and you wanna get thread in a variety of colors. So, um, you know, so that the thread matches your clothes that you're repairing. The next thing you're going to need is straight pins. Now, these are actually quilting pins. Um, they're meant because they're really long and they have a plastic head on them, big plastic head. Um, they're meant for um, quilting, but I use them in sewing because sometimes, as you know, I sew for a lot of people. So sometimes I have like thick layers or whatever. So, but you could just get regular straight pins or you could get glass head pins which are very thin and have glass heads on them. The next thing you're going to need is sewing needles. So sewing needles come in different sizes. These are a size seven, see the seven right there? Um, the best sizes to get are uh, a seven, eight, or nine. And then if you have silk, you're gonna need smaller needles. So the bigger the number, the bigger the needle. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so if you own silk or um, crepe or any kind of fancy fabrics like that, you're going to need a smaller size. So like a four or five or six. Then if you have trouble threading needles, you can get one of these little needle threaders. And they usually come in a pack of three and they're very inexpensive. Um... I think they were like three for like 50 cents or something. And I keep these sometimes um, on the smaller needles, like the four, five, or six, you won't be able to get this through the eye. But on the seven, eights, and nine, they'll fit right in and help you thread your needle quicker. Um, the next thing I recommend is a thimble. Now, thimbles are like, in my opinion, like underwear. There's a whole bunch of different styles, but not everybody likes the, all the styles. So um, I generally use my thimble on my middle finger because that's the one that I push the needle through the thread with. 
but some people use it on their index, some people use it on their ring finger, and buying a thimble, again, is a very personal thing. Perhaps you don't like the metal needles, perhaps you would rather have a leather needle or a silicone needle. Um, if you know someone who sews that has a variety of different thimbles, ask them if you can kind of try them on and see which ones you like better. <clears throat> the next thing you're gonna need is beeswax. So beeswax is used to coat the thread, so you coat your thread, and it helps, per, um, it helps keep the thread moving through the fabric smoothly. So some threads, like the polyester thread, if you're trying to mend something that's cotton, it kind of wants to tangle up. Well, this will help that not to happen. The next thing you're gonna need is marking tools. So these are water soluble marking fabric pencils um, and they're by Clover, they're my favorite ones. But you could use other things. You could use a black Sharpie. You could use Taylor's chalk. Um, and there's also um, uh, marking fabric markers that like disappear when you iron them or disappear on their own or disappear when you wash them. It just depends on what you wanna do with them. And the last thing you're gonna need in your sewing kit is some way to measure. So this is a measuring tape. Um, and this is a quilter's measuring tape, so it's like 120 inches long. Um, so you don't have to have one this long. You can just have a regular 36 inch measuring tape. I also like to keep this little bitty tiny six inch ruler um, because it's great when I'm working with small pieces. Then, um, well, now you have all this stuff. What are you gonna do with it? Well, find you some kind of a box to keep it in. I got this box off of eBay, or not eBay, um, Amazon. Um, and it was like $9 or something. It works perfect. It's kind of like a tackle box because it has all these little compartments in it. But it works great because I can close it up and carry it wherever I need to go. You could also use like a plastic storage bowl. Or if you want to go old school, go to the Dollar General and buy you a box of Dutch butter cookies. Eat the cookies and save the box. Um, and, and people my age will think that's funny because... That's usually what grandma used to keep her sewing supplies in. But anyway, so just make sure you have something to keep them in. Remember not to use your fabric shears on anything but fabric. And there you go. That's all you need to keep in your sewing box. Um, I will do some videos soon to show you how to repair holes and sew on buttons and mend seams. But for now, let's get our sewing kits together. All right, we'll see you soon, sugar bee.